Hi there. In this video, I'll be talking about how fuses work. Again, I'm using the FET Simulation Circuit Construction Kit DC Virtual Lab. And I've already built this circuit with a cell, an ammeter, of course, to measure the current. Here is a switch. This is a fuse. And last but not least, a lamp with a resistance of 10 ohms. Now, I should say about the fuse, in case you don't know, the fuse is a safety device and it contains a wire that heats up and melts if the current increases above a certain value. So this one has a current rating of one amp, which means of course, if the current increases above one amp, then the wire within it heats up and melts. So let's see what happens to that fuse when I close this switch. Right, not an awful lot. So you can see everything's working perfectly well. The current in the circuit is of course less than one amp, which is why of course the fuse wire is not melting. We have a current of 0.89 amps. Of course, the lamp is lighting. We have a current in the circuit. You can see the electrons are moving in an anti-clockwise direction. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to simulate a fault known as a short circuit. So what I'm going to do is to place just a wire in parallel with the lamp. And of course, this is going to be a low resistance path. I've not set it up yet. When I touch these two connections together, it's going to set up a low resistance path known as a short circuit. And because the resistance within the circuit is going to be much lower, the current will therefore increase, increases above one amp. And hopefully we should see that fuse melting. Let's see then. There we have it. So what you've seen here is that, of course, the wire within the fuse has melted because the current increased above one amp. What I could do again at this point, I could actually replace that fuse with a brand new one, again with a current rating of one amp. Watch the fuse. And if you can, watch the ammeter. There we have it. So I don't know if you saw, but the current measuring that ammeter was far greater than one amp. And again, the wire within the fuse is melted. Now, if you thought, or if you think, what would happen if I didn't have the fuse within the circuit? Well, what would happen with a very large current is that, of course, there's a risk that the wires making up the circuit could overheat and that could start a fire. That's why the fuse is a safety device. It could be, of course, that this is a fuse in series with, say, a very expensive widescreen television. Who knows? And, of course, that could be very expensive. The internal electronics could all melt and you've broken your television if you don't have a fuse wire, which is going to melt when the current gets too large. So, of course, what I would need to do is, of course, repair that fault. I'm going to delete that wire, which was in parallel with the lamp. And now, of course, at this point, what I can do is I can replace my fuse and everything works perfectly well. Now, in case you don't know, on my channel, I have actually made a video in the past, which goes into a little bit more detail about how fuses work. And in case you don't know, the two main fuse ratings we need to know about in National Five Physics are the three amp fuse and the 13 amp fuse. And I talk about an equation which is in the relationship sheets that you can use in order to work out the fuse rating based on the power rating of the device. So why not give that one a look? And of course, why not try this FET simulation for yourself as well? Until next time though, we'll see you later.